All this work that we're doing, brothers, for this ministry, eventually is going to pay off. You better believe it, man. It's going to pay off like you'll never believe. Okay? And by the way, we're the highest value male on this planet. The men of the Lord. The men of this truth. The hopeful elect of Yahweh Barshim Shai. The highest value male there is. There's a call tonight for the UK to train a citizen's army to fight a, a war on land in the future. And it comes from the head of the army. General Sir Patrick Sanders made his, his comments while highlighting the threat from Russia. Well, our defence correspondent Jonathan Beale is here with me. Jonathan, this sounds quite alarming. It may sound alarming, but he is not the only person who is warning of a potential conflict in Europe. We've heard similar from the head, head of NATO's military committee, from the German defence minister, even Grant Chap, saying we're moving from a post-war to a pre-war era. Why are they saying this? Because of Russia, because of what it's doing in Ukraine. They do not think that is the limit of President Putin's ambition. Specifically, what General Sanders is calling for is preparation for, in effect, mass mobilisation, the creation of a citizen's army. Uh, that doesn't mean people are going to get call-up papers or, or there's going to be people forced to join the military. Uh, but the preparations, he says, should be there. Why? Because the army, the regular army, has been cut to 73,000. Even with extra reserves, he says, that will not be enough. Of course, the inference too, probably, that we're not spending enough as a country on defence. Now, of course, this gets politicians, particularly in an election year, very nervous. Today, Downing Street said these remarks were very unhelpful. That said, I don't think General Sanders really cares. He's coming to the end of his term. He said he does not want the country to be in a position as it was in the summer of 2014, when all the alarm bells were ringing before the First World War and they were largely ignored. This is his wake-up call. Thank you very much. Jo General Sanders has made no secret of the fact he thinks the British army is too small. The current Conservative government has cut it to its smallest size in more than 300 years. And General Sanders made the point that over the last 30 years, the British army has halved in size. He's made the point that he sees the current generation of soldiers as a pre war generation. Rather than living in, in what's been defined as the post-World War II, the post-war era, he talks about the pre-war era and that was a uh, phrase picked up by Defence Secretary Grant Shapps uh, earlier last week. The point he was making about mobilisation, he was saying it is prudent to prepare for national mobilisation. He was saying that it is essential countries take steps to be ready to move onto a war footing, but he wasn't quite going as far as saying we must be on a war footing now. He wasn't quite going as far as saying we need to uh, mobilise now. He was making the point that uh, the country, Britain and indeed NATO allies, need to be ready. It's also fair to say that these comments have rather blindsided uh, the, the government, have blindsided Downing Street. Shalom. All right, Shalom. <clears throat> First and foremost, I would like to give all praise on the glory unto Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shah, Baha Shem Rakakwadash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS, whom rule well, teach well, being great examples towards younger brothers, and peace and blessing, salutation to the whole flag out there, pushing his word and truth and in sincerity across the four winds. In the name of Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shah, pushing to get up out of here, Shalom to the whole flag, the believers, the listeners. Whom have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. And what I want to get into this morning, you know, is the role, all right, that, that, that Russia, you know, plays in end time prophecy. You know, and the only way to explain what's going on real time, you know, in the world with these major events, you know, dealing with war, all right, dealing with, you know, global digital currencies, okay. Dealing with, all right, um, pestilence, you know, rumors of, you know, certain pestilence outbreaks. You know, all these things are explained in prophecy. They're explained in scripture. You know, that's why, you know, it's, it's important, you know, in these end times to have a thorough understanding of prophecy. 
Okay, that's why it's so much emphasis, you know, on prophecy. Okay, when you go into the scriptures. All right, and that's the spirit of Yahweh Shai. All right, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who's coming to establish, all right, a righteous kingdom in this earth. All right, and this third world's war, okay, will be the stage in which Yahweh Shai will enter this realm. Okay, that's going to be the scenario that's going to cause Yahweh Shai to enter into this realm and conquer the heathen and establish the throne of David, okay, which is a kingdom for the nation of people, for the uh, people of the nation of Israel, okay, to run the earth in righteousness, man, okay, they're governing, all right, their government, okay, of 144,000 men, 12,000 men from each tribe to establish righteousness in the earth under Yahweh Shah, okay, and their kingdom is soon to come, all right, and if we don't know the exact day, the exact date, all right, and time, but we know, all right, the signs leading up, you know, to this transition of kingdoms, okay? And you read Revelation 19 and 10, it says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See that thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shah, worship the Most High. For the testimony of Yahweh Shah is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, it's the spirit of prophecy, man. You know, and prophecy is the only thing that can explain, okay, what's going on real time in the earth, man. You know, when you go here, that's why it, 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 we're, we're commanded, you know, to teach our people prophecy, man. You know, we go into a lot of things, you know, dealing with the scriptures, okay, but the main thing is always going to be prophecy, man. All right, because through prophecy is salvation, you know, understanding what's going on, you know, because we're going to be delivered based off faith, you know. And when you understand prophecy, you know what to have faith in, you know, you know what to believe in. OK, this is second Ezra um, 15 to 1 said, behold, all right, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord. So we're commanded to prophesy, man, to speak prophecy to Israel, man, you know, we give our people a standard, you know, order, okay, uh, uh, you know, self-development, you know, all that is involved in the ministry, that's a part of the ministry, man, okay, but the main thing is always going to be prophecy, man, all right, verse 2, it says, and cause them to be written in paper, which is the scriptures, for they are faithful and true, you know, and as we go into what's going on in the world, Right, it's just a token that everything that the Lord said will be true, and let's prove it because, as we've seen from those two videos, what you have, you know, is pretty much NATO, all right, and these EU nations, okay, are gearing up for war with Russia, okay, because Russia, you know, has pretty much, you know, trampled, okay, Ukraine. All right, the, the Ukraine military is, 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 is running on fumes, okay? And they know, all right, they have a fear that, that, that Russia, you know, is, is going to keep marching, man. Which the scriptures say that the Lord put hooks in the jaws, all right, of Gog and Magog, which is Russia, and bring them forth, okay? And these, and these EU nations, these NATO nations know it, all right? And there's nothing they can do with Russia, man, Okay? And the Lord has a spirit on the Russians, okay, hey, to, to conquer, okay, and then to invade, all right? And it's going to lead to all-out war, all right? So, let's get the precept of dealing with that, man, okay? Dealing with that, man. Let's go here, because this is the times that we are in. <laughs> you know, we in war times. You have spiritual war, okay? Then you have... All right, carnal war is brewing, you know, it's happening at the same time. But the the, the, the the spiritual war is dictating what we're seeing happen, you know, in the flesh. Okay, this is Jeremiah 50. Okay, this is Jeremiah 50 and I started just real quick, 50 and 22. It says a sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. Okay, so what we're hearing is the sound of battle, you know, everybody's, you know, in preparation for war, 
You know, they say we're no longer in the post-war era. We're in the pre-war era. <laughs> okay? A pre-war. And what war is that? The third war. Okay, the third war. The third world's war. Two wars have passed. The third war coming quickly. See, now we're in the pre-war era. Okay? The time before the war. Okay? So, the, the, the sound of battle <laughs> is in the land. All right, Murph finna be wiped away, and the Lord said exactly what He would do. You know, one thing about prophecy, prophecy is very precise. You know, when it goes in particular things, this is Isaiah 13 and 17 it says, "Behold, I will stir up the Medes, which are the Russians, prophetically the Medes are the Russians, man, and I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it." Okay, so you go to his word stare. It's the Lord that's staring up. All right, the Medes. Okay, to be in their war spirit, man. Okay, you go in their word. Um. All right, like it says, uh, Ahar. All right, in the Hebrew. Okay, which is to rouse up oneself to awaken. Okay, to rouse to act. In an aroused manner to awake. You know, and pretty much they've awakened the beast. You know, that bear. Okay, and that bear is marching forward and it's devouring, man. <laughs> okay. That, that, that bear is awakened. Alright, which is Russia, man. Which is going to play a major role in the destruction of America. Alright, you're going to have multiple nations shoot missiles. Okay, and turn America into a desert. It's going to be spearheaded by Russia. Okay, the Medes, the Medes are being stirred up, man. Okay, to lead this onslaught, all right, of America, man. Because that's what it all leads to, you know. Because when you keep reading that, um, all right, you keep reading Isaiah, Isaiah 13 and 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. And they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb that their eyes shall not spare children, man. And ultimately, it's going to be those missiles that are shot over here, man. Okay? Those are the arrows that's going to spare not. Okay? Those missiles don't have feelings and emotions, man. They just coming to destroy. Okay? They they, they, <laughs> they don't have... uh, uh <laughs> they're, they're not biased. <laughs> okay? They don't have a no women and children policy, man. When those missiles are shot off, it's coming to destroy, all right, the inhabitants of Babylon, man. You know, and we'll pray that we're delivered from this, man. Verse 19, it says, in Babylon, the glory of the beauty, all right, in Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' excellency shall be as when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, man. And how was, all right, Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed, man, through fire, through suffer, Okay. That same, the same elements that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah is going to be the same elements that destroyed Babylon, man. That's what this is all leading to. Okay, it's gradually leading to that point. You know, it's not going to, it's not going to stop until America is destroyed. Okay, until America is, is, is a desert. All right, until these missiles make America a desert. That's where it ends, man. Okay, ain't no, all you people that are optimistic and hope things settle down nah man it's gonna gradually keep escalating to america is a, is a desert okay and it was always set up that way you know because you go let's get this isaiah 46 you know we always get it you know and then we're gonna show okay hey how this is true all right um yeah, isaiah 46 and then um, and nine, it says, remember the former things of old for I'm the most high and there is none else. I'm the most high and there is none like me. Declaring declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Okay, so what we're seeing playing out in the earth is the counsel of the Lord. Okay, prophecy is what the Lord's is the Lord's agenda in the earth, man. Okay, everyone talks about all these different agendas and what they got going on, Agenda 2030 and, 
you know, uh, King Alfred's agenda, and, you know, all these different agendas that people have, you know, these Edomites have, well, the Lord's agenda, okay, is the one that's going to be executed, man, okay, to perfection, you know, and we're seeing these things play out, so the Lord had all these things planned from the beginning, you know, when you go here, there's no random events that just happened, man, all these things were predestined, Okay, that's why we can go into Revelation 20. All right, dealing with Esau coming back into power, you know, after the Dark Ages, man, what they call the Dark Ages, you know, when Jake, you know, was in the positions of nobilities, man, and the ruling families in the earth, you know, it was Jake, you know, under the ban of uh, the Byzantine Empire, okay, the, um, uh, the Moors, all right, and even the Russian, Russian Czars. Okay, Revelation 27 says that when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. This is Esau, all right, whose coming is after the working of Satan. And speaking of Esau, Edom, you know, he comes in, in, in the energy of Satan, the adversary, man. All right, and he was loosed, you know, out of his prison of not being able to rule in the earth. You know, he was able to take down, you know, um, the Byzantine Empire, you know, Constantinople, okay, you know, the Ottoman Turks took down Constantinople, all right, you had, um, uh, King Ferdinand of Argon, okay, and Queen Isabella, you know, they took down the Moorish Empire, Granada, you know, then they started sending, all right, these devils over here to the New World to conquer, all right, they was loose to go rule the earth man their rulership was rebirth in the earth man the renaissance okay so all these things we're reading all right the the, the, the summary of esau's rulership all right and then we're going to read it's going to go right into the destruction okay verse 8 it says and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth and this is what this devil has done Okay, and the, the the biggest deception that he did was the Bible. All right, the, the, that was the biggest deception that he did. You know, the the image of, of the Messiah of the Most High. Okay, the the, the 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 um, you know, he pretty much stole the identity of the Israelites, and now he's claiming to be, you know, <laughs> the chosen people. Okay, the narrative of the Bible, you know, salvation for everyone. You know, it was a ma that was a major deception, man. Okay, and he runs the earth based off deception, man. False illusions of freedom, democracy, you know. False sense of, of, of everything, man. <laughs> you know, fake food. Like, this man has deceived the world on every level, man. From, the, from, from great things to small things, man. This earth is ran in complete deception, man. That's why this, this truth is a major threat to how this man runs the earth, man. Okay. So he will be loose to uh, uh, come back in power and he will come back, you know, with the sword and with deception. OK, but what would it lead to? So let's read Revelation 28 again. It shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, which is Russia, man. So everywhere you go in the scriptures, Gog and Magog, all right, or the Medes. All right, or that North Country, <laughs> you see, it always shows up in the picture when it comes to the destruction of Babylon, man. So this is why we're seeing Russia mentioned so much. Okay, Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is the sand of the sea, and um, um, Russia, um, yeah, Russia, you know, currently. All right, is having 1,800 men join the army every day, you know? The Lord is in control of everything, man. He's causing, all right, he, he's in control of the mind of every single man that's joining Russia's military because he has a purpose. Russia is a tool, okay, that's going to bring about the destruction of America, all right, and, and, and ushering in of Yahweh Shai to come conquer all these heathen, okay, and establish a righteous kingdom in the earth, man. So Russia is is is, is a, um has a has a major role, okay, 
in the destruction of this current rulership, okay, and the ushering in of the kingdom, all right, of um, of Yahweh You know, <laughs> Russia plays a pivotal part, okay. But guess what? The Edomites in Russia they're going into captivity <laughs> under Yahweh All right, we're not pro Russia. We just understand the role that Russia plays in end time prophecy, man. Okay. So, Lord will, you know, you brothers, all right, and you sisters edified, once again, I'll give all praise on and glory unto Yahweh Bashim al Shai, you know, double honors to the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great example towards younger brothers, man, you know, and just to say the hell with Russia, Russia is just a tool, a throwaway tool, okay, to bring about the Lord's prophecy, man, you know, Shalom.